and welcome to Living Truth. As a media ministry of the People's Church, we share biblical teachings to help you grow spiritually together with our church community. We're so glad that you've joined us as we welcome our special guest, David Mensah, to our One Global Mission Conference 2023. David will explore the possibilities of living together as one humanity created by a triune God. We pray that your heart and minds will be challenged and moved by God's word through David. Our text today is Mark chapter 8, verses 22 to 25. Mark chapter 8, verses 22 to 25. They came to Bethesda, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Amen. You guys, your amen <laughs> is, you're not sure whether you want to say amen or not. We've just read a text that describes us very significantly. This a man that Jesus took so much time to get him to see. The hearing of this man, Jesus has never handled that kind before. Normally, Jesus will just touch a man or a woman, and the person is healed. Not this one. They bring the man to Jesus. Jesus touches him. Nothing happens. Jesus holds his hand. Jesus by himself. He held the man's hand and walked him outside the village. Something very strange. After the village, Jesus spat into his eyes. Still, he didn't see. Wow. Then Jesus, scriptures, as I read, Jesus put two hands on this man's shoulders again. And then asked him, do you see now? And the man surprised Jesus, I believe, and everybody who is there, that yes, I see. But I see people like trees walking about. Trees with branches and all. I see people, but they are like trees walking around. What kind of sight is that? So Jesus holds him back and says, No, you're not seeing properly. And prayed for him again. And the man's eyes opened. And he could see clearly. Hallelujah. Now the faith. The Christian faith. The Christian faith. There are two things that we are dealing with here. It should not take Jesus. So much time. So much time. So much time. To cause us to be significant in this world. It shouldn't take Jesus too much time. Some of us have sat on these pews over and over and over and over again. We are not seeing. We are not seeing. 
And when we begin to see, we see people like trees walking around. You know, when, when people are trees, you can chop them down. When people are branches, you just yank it down. But if people are made in the name of Jesus Christ, people are made in the image of God. Everyone is made in the image of God. And Jesus wanted this man to see that people are not trees. People are not walking around like trees. The Jewish people are not trees. The Asian people are not trees. East Indians are not trees. Blacks are not trees. Irish people are not trees. They are made in the image of God. Hallelujah. If you're going to clap, you clap. If you won't clap, you don't clap. <laughs> people are made in the image of God. And before the, the assignment that has been given me today is to talk about racism. Racism is a lot tougher. I'm, I'm bringing this home because, you know, we, we should be the people to handle some of these serious problems that we are facing with today. And Jesus did the work for us. God did the work for us. You know why? Because God said to us, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, God clearly said to you and me that we are the salt of the earth. We are. We are not being made the salt of the earth. God is not making you and I the salt of the earth. He said we have been made already. We have been made the salt of the earth so that anywhere we go, we make the place palatable. We make the place livable. We've been made. We are the salt of the earth. But the salt, sometimes the church that God has been made a salt Sometimes create the problems. And sometimes simply doesn't know what to do. When you visit Ghana, there's a castle. They call it Elmina Castle. Underneath it is where the boats come. Who, who has been to Ghana before? Let me see your hand. Just be bold. One, two, three. They don't know. Everybody is scared <laughs> to answer my question. But when you go, thank you. When you go to Ghana or those who haven't been there, when you go, go to Elmina Castle. When you go to Elmina Castle, you will see that the castle is built in such a way that Boats come under the castle. Boats come just beneath a church. A church is built on top of where the boats come to pick up the slaves. And that church, there's a, there's a, a, a scripture verse written on it. May God help us. There's a verse written on that little church. And the European man is sitting on it. And slaves are being moved under him. When you look at it, it tears your heart apart. That the church can do that. The church can use the Bible. Sitting and watching people dying in front of them, molesting them in front of them, and shipping them that many will be dying in the sea. They've been torn, first of all, from their people. The church has been part of what has happened to our indigenous people. 
in the north. I was reading that before coming here. Our natives in the north, the church again young them from their, their, their mothers and fathers. Young them and try to take out their precious language away from them, to bury them, to take them. Because they were being looked at as trees, trees and branches. They don't qualify to be people. Their language is bad. The color of their hair is bad. So they have to do anything they want to do with them that fits them, the church. My wife just told me this afternoon that, David, you know what? When you get excited like that, nobody hears you anymore. So we take these native kids, young them up, malfeed them, and they die, and their bodies shallow because they are not just complete human beings. They are trees. And the Lord tells that man, you can never tell people that I created that they look like trees walking about. Nobody walks about like a tree. You're natives. You hold the blood that God made and Jesus died for them. But the church always lags behind. Our saltiness is not seen. We need to understand that. That we have fumbled enough on this. So it's not just enough for David Mensa to be here and to be saying that I'm a Christian. I'm this, I'm that. Let me tell you something about myself. Before I came to Canada to study at the University of Toronto, I was the Scripture Union Secretary in Northern Ghana. I was a scripture union secretary. But when my father died when I was a little kid, my uncle just did the most cruel things. I was, I, to my uncle's eyes, I was, I was even worse than a tree. He did everything to destroy me, and I had to escape from that man. I was sitting at the library of the university. Listen to this. I was a scripture union secretary. Really solid Christian. Talk to myself. But I sat in the library one day and grief. Grief overwhelmed me. That how can my brothers, my father's brother, do that for me? And in that library, I actually asked God, I said, God, if you really are alive, the way I think you are alive, kill that man. Uh -huh. I was so angered, boiled with hatred, and I said, God, kill him. So I, I, know, your, I know some kind that we know text, we preach. But in our heart, there's no forgiveness. We are still asking, kill him. In that library, that very library, God spoke to my heart that when I kill your uncle, you'll be the next. <laughs> because when your dad died and you were going through all this, you were stealing. You became a thief. I reasoned a little bit and said, well, I stole to live. But he says, stealing is stealing. He dies, you will die. And that same library, I said, okay, don't kill him then. <laughs> we need to forgive everybody. We need, that's one of the medicines to the believers, to forgive so that we can move forward. Whoever has hurt you, 
forgive and you move forward. You know the church? This COVID when it came, then suddenly things were going around and it became China, China COVID. I'm not, I'm not talking about politics here. I'm talking to God's children in this church. And our Asian sisters and brothers suddenly became confused, terrified, and some of them even covering their faces unnecessarily. I expected, I expected that when the COVID went away and your doors were opening, the churches of Canada, the doors were opening, the members of the churches, elders, will all line up to the street and every Asian that walked to the door, you hug them and said, come home. We don't consider you as a carrier of something. Come home. Toronto Star and three V's would have been coming to say, look at how God's children are welcoming their, their people home. But you were scared of them too. You were probably scared. Some of our Jewish brothers, our Jewish sisters, can't walk. They, 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 the racism, the, the dimension it has taken is alarming. But remember, you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. God has given us this saltiness to be able to deal with things that are going on. My wife and I, we made our mind that we will deal with people who have been ostracized. Today, there are 250 of them that we have reconciled together and that they are dealing peacefully with one another. We have not considered them as trees walking around. They are people that are walking around. We can do that in Christ's name because he sorted us. Wherever we go, when there's tension, we bring ease. God calls us to do that. And when we surrender, like you are doing here, the Lord provides avenues. The thing we don't want to do is to go about like what we are seeing today. I told you I know the time is running. But quite often, the church will rather follow the world and go by the principles of the world. We don't seem to be able to find a consistent way to lead like going into a war zone when the world has failed to say this is what Christ presents. And you see people opening their eyes that Christ presents this. We need to provide avenues. We need to lead. Today the word, I, I come and I hear everywhere what the world is coining for us and we are all following it is tolerance. There's a word they call tolerance. Tolerance. Ah, then we are all involved in tolerance, tolerance, tolerance. Our word is not tolerance. We don't tolerate one another. We love one another. We love one another. <laughs> Jesus, when he was put on the cross and the nails were being put on his hands, that triggered divine anger. God was hurt that his son was being dealt with like this. It triggered vengeance. And Jesus quickly, on your behalf and on my behalf, cried quickly and said, Daddy, forgive them. Forgive David. Forgive Brett. Forgive Brenda. Forgive them. They don't know what we are doing. That's not tolerance. That's love. He loved us while he was being nailed. That's what you need to do. Don't follow the word tolerance. You look for somebody that somebody is neglected and you go for the person. 
Like I told you about your wife and husbands. We are not just simply to tolerate. We have to lead. We are the pathfinders. We are pathfinders. We create avenues for the world to follow. We don't follow what the world, the world is bankrupt of the real truth. You have it because you are the sword. We raise the bar for the world. They don't raise bars for us. Amen? Amen. We raise the bar for the world. There's a monk, I want to complete with his story. In the fourth century, his name is Telmachus. In the fourth century, the Christian Rome, the Christian Rome was obsessed with the fight in the amphitheater, gladiators. That's what they entertained themselves with. Men who are born, men who have mothers and fathers. When the two men comes into the arena, one of them has to die. And then the Christian, Christian Constantinople, they cheer, yeah, yeah, yeah. they have killed one another, they entertainment, people, trees. And a poor monk, a tiny monk, came to Rome. And he thought he was going to Rome. He was going to the theater. He was going to watch these exotic games that are there. And when he went to his horror, two men were with javelins, one to die. And the monk, he went to them, the two of them, and said, in the name of Christ, please stop. In the name of Christ, please stop. And they won't listen. So as the hall they appears, he entered between the two men. And they pierced him to death. And as his blood and other things were oozing down, somebody from the top of the arena, the very top, Walked down, all the way down, couldn't handle it, walked out. Somebody also from the other end walked down, but couldn't handle it. The whole amphitheater emptied. And that was the end of the gladiators' fight in Rome. Amen? <laughs> Are you going to go out today and be Telemachus? Are you going to go out today and look at where it's hurting and you go between these people? Are you going to go out today and see a brother or a sister that is probably not your color or your color that you say, this one is not going to die. I'm going to be inside. I'm going to pick up. That's what God is asking us to do. By his grace, we've started doing that in Africa, in Ghana. We need to pick up and go between people who are suffering. Sometimes it might be getting the spear, but God in his kindness will help us when we move with our hearts to show people Go in the power and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ and be a person of salt, be a person that is leading by love but, but by not tolerance. Don't tolerate love. The Lord be with you.
Jesus. No one, no one, no one. Who else can walk, walk on the water? No one, no one, no yeah. one. Who else can answer, answer by fire? No one, no one, no one. Who else can bring down the tallest of giants? much for joining us today. We hope that you will leave here today with a deeper desire to see Jesus through the Word this week. You can visit livingtruth.ca for resources like our daily devotionals and past sermons. We look forward to growing more together next Sunday.